I know we've never met, we've never seen each other. But my instinct tells me that you're young and gay and beautiful. Thanks, Bob. The Gremlin. The legend himself, William Gaxton, was born on December 2nd in 1890 in San Francisco, California, as Arturo Antonio Gaxiola. William attended Boone Military Academy as well as Lowell High School in San Francisco. At the age of 18, Arturo Antonio Gaxiola changed his name to William Gaxton. He then studied at the University of California at Berkeley for two years. While attending the University of California, he had his first performance, like many of us do, crawling under a canvas on stage in order to simulate the movement of waves in the Count of Monte Cristo. He earned 55 cents a performance, which is equivalent to about $8.50 today. He debuted in vaudeville with a partner performing a song and dance act, which led to a solo traveling act that took him to New York. He then began to perform with Anna Laughlin, and then he moved to a lead role in the sketch A Regular Businessman. Gaxton then enlisted in the U.S. Navy in World War I, stationed at Pelham Park, New York. After the Navy, Gaxton focused toward more mainstream theater. Gaxton's first Broadway appearance was in the Music Box Review on October 23, 1922, with music by Irving Berlin. He then toured in the company of Betty Lee, and he appeared in All For You, followed by appearances in Miss Happiness. In November 1927, Gaxton opened as Martin in A Connecticut Yankee, a musical adaptation of Mark Twain's novel by Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart. The musical centers around Martin as he is knocked out and is seemingly in the court of King Arthur in the year 528. This performance really propelled Gaxton's career. The day after the opening, his name was placed above the play's title. In 1929, Gaxton played the role of Peter Forbes in Cole Porter's 50 Million Frenchman and later starred in the film by the same name. Gaxton's most notable role was definitely John P. Wintergreen in Of the I Sing, which opened on December 26, 1931. The musical focuses on the election, campaign, and presidency of John P. Wintergreen. He later reprised the role in Let Em Eat Cake, a sequel to Of the I Sing, which flopped. Of the I Sing brought Gaxton together with his partner in crime, not talking about his wife, Madeline Cameron, but the talented Victor Moore. Gaxton and Moore formed a comedy duo that would work together in multiple musicals and films. Both starred in Of the I Sing, Let Em Eat Cake, Louisiana Purchase, and Anything Goes. Another notable role for Gaxton was Billy Crocker in Anything Goes, featuring Ethel Merman, Victor Moore, and Gaxton. Gaxton's most notable song for the show was You're the Top, shown here with Gaxton's actual voice. What if this pretty is not so pretty? At least it'll tell you how great you are. You're the top. You're the Coliseum. You're the top. You're the Blue Museum. You're a melody from a symphony by Strauss. You're a bend of butter, a Shakespeare talent. You're Mickey Mouse. All the night. His later theater roles included Leopold in White Horse Inn, Buckley Joyce Thomas in Leave It To Me, Jim Taylor in Louisiana Purchase, Dick Levi in Hollywood Pinafore, and Frank Jordan in Nellie Bly. Gexton also had a large film career in such films as Stepping Along, It's the Old Army Game, 50 Million Frenchmen, Silent Partners, Their Big Moment, Best Fool Forward, and Billy Rose's Diamond Casino. At the time, William was referred to as Billy by his fellow members of the theater crowd, and it was said that his role in Billy Rose's Diamond Casino was very similar to how he was in person. Picking up a show, I'll make it tasty, because I know secret gourmet will always say a dish to be delish must have the flavor. For the years 1936 to 1939, 1952 to 1953, and 1957 to 1962, Gaxton served as the president of the Lambs, a New York theatrical club. He also served as a trustee on the Actors Fund and, fun fact, vice president of a perfume manufacturing company. He died the 2nd of February, 1963. William Gaxton had a very versatile career, from the stage to film and to radio. Gaxton used his lyric baritone voice and comedic sensibility to create his career. He found his way through the arts by using the elements he had in his wheelhouse and running with them. Thank you 